Why not both? I posed the question last week, KK or Ashlyn Shade? I spent the whole week talking about plus minus or the whole video talking about plus minus and looking at various lineups and what their points were per hundred possessions and just broke it down and did a whole various versus, you know, KK with this or Ashlyn Shade with that. And, you know, just assumed on this that, you know, it, Brady, it would be a combination of Brady or Griffin with one of those and what the hell do you know? Gina said, F you. I am going to go super small because I tried to match up big against Texas and we got our asses kicked. So if I am going to go down, I am going to go down with the best players in my mind on this team who are Edwards, Beckers, Shade, KK Arnold, and Mule. And that was what the starting lineup was against Ball State. And what do you know? It works. So UConn came out smoking with 37 points in the first quarter. Ashlyn Shade was hot. And the offense was cranking. But on the downside, in the second and third quarters, they got 15 and 16 points. They cranked it up a little bit again in the fourth with 22 points. It was a positive win as predictably they took down Ball State 90 to 63. And overall, any win is a good win. And God knows UConn needed it after the Texas loss. And they're sort of licking their wounds, obviously. Now, from what I could tell from the press conference, he is going to stick with this for a little while and give this lineup a chance. But as soon as I say that, it'll be changed. But supposedly, this this is the one he's going to go with because he feels like he's building with his young players and at least he's developing something. Um, and the big question is, you can go small against Ball State. And I understand the theory of small. I mean, it works if you score and like in that first quarter they did but if you don't then you're gonna be small and not scoring then you're gonna be in trouble and that will be the question in their upcoming games against North Carolina and against Louisville they that is obviously a step up in competition from Ball State and I'm just curious I mean I think everybody is curious to see how this will shape out and overall, it's probably not that big of a deal because if they come out and they're sort of struggling, he will just sub in Aubrey Griffin early on. Tonight, she got 16 minutes, was four for six, and got 14 points. I I wonder, yeah, it's it's interesting. He talked early on in like pre when he, he didn't know he'd have all these injuries. He talked about Griffin and talking about using her in bursts and things like that. I wonder if he's going to go back to that theory and think that she's at her best when she's just in the game for short bursts of minute versus logging 30 to 35 minutes. I'm just not sure. I don't, you know, I rubbish that theory at the time, but to be determined, I, I still think that she's one of your best athletes on the team and needs to be getting 25 to 30 minutes in each game but at the same time I understand the frustration with her as sometimes she shows up and can be damn good like in the game against Kansas and you know in at the end of the first half against or at UC, against UCLA but then other times she just disappears at, like Texas and you you just don't get anything at all from her and that was one of the overriding themes in the press conference, his overall frustration with this team, and he expects it. But but he said in terms of the seniors, he's like, the thing that frustrates me is I never know what I'm going to get day to day. You know, we'll do it one or two times, and you think we've got it sorted, and then the mistakes happen, and, you know, we don't, and we, we just don't have – the consistency of being good all the time on the things that we should be good on. Now, Ice Brady got 14 minutes. She went two for four with four points and four rebounds. I just think he's going to make her earn increased minutes, which isn't a bad thing. You know, I, again, he really regretted 
trying to match up big against Texas, and I think he felt betrayed sort of by Brady and Griffin saying, you know, I tried to match up with them, and I got absolutely nothing, and we made a run in the fourth quarter when I went small, and that is what we are going to do. We are just going to try to outscore teams. As well, if I don't know what I'm going to get in Griffin, I might as well start developing Cadence Samuels, who got 19 minutes tonight as well and shot four for 18, three of six from three for 11 points because she'll give me more shooting than Aubrey Griffin would anyway, and I can take those mistakes. At least I know I'm developing something that will give me more at the end of the season versus an off and on Griffin. So what do you think? Are you confident against North Carolina at the Hall of Fame game coming up or not? This is obviously a big game for UConn because it could have big consequences because if they lose, then they will probably drop out of the top 25, I would suggest. If they take a, a home loss, then I think the pressure would be on to have to drop them out At least they'd probably be like 24 or 25 in my mind. Uh, So I'm curious to see what happens. But overall, I really do like it because instead of, you know, I I hate the football coach that doesn't go for it on fourth and one or doesn't go with what his gut is telling him. And that is what he believes in. He's like, these are my best players. I should play them and see what the hell happens. And we are just going to try to outscore teams. He knows that they are going to be extremely vulnerable when they go against big teams. But he's willing to take that chance, and hey, why not? You've got nothing to lose. At the very least, all you're doing is developing your young talent for next year and making Ice Brady earn her playing time. Now, one last thing. I have not heard anybody say anything on Patterson. Is she playing with the team? Has that been revealed in any press conferences that I have missed? I have not seen that. I have not heard anybody ask the question I saw tonight where somebody asked about um, Descharm, and he was just like, don't ask me. I don't know. She's not playing, and he doesn't have any prognosis on when she will play. That that one will be interesting because she's starting to hit that mark of, um, you know, you're able to play. I think it's like if you get up to 30% of your – under 30% of the games, they can redshirt you, and I wonder if they're going to give her, like, another chance to – to see if she can play through it. And then if she goes like two or three games, then they will shut her down if she comes up against that 30% mark and just say, we'll redshirt you. Or maybe they don't want to do that because maybe they want the scholarship. I, I don't know how how they're going to go about doing it. Um, but yeah, you'd want to know when Patterson gets back because that's your next hope of having another big player that you will be able to develop and give you what you need so that you just don't have to roll with this small lineup all of the time because you will come across big teams that you will need to match up at times as well. There'll be nights when your littles don't shoot well, and that is a difficult proposition. The other Hall of Fame game, well, there are a few, but the one I'm interested in as well is the South Carolina versus Utah, because that is the roadmap for UConn in a lot of ways, is just a whole bunch of shooting out there, and let's see what we can do. You know, we are going to outshoot you to death, and I'm curious how Utah is going to go against South Carolina. Now, this would have been more interesting last year with South Carolina um, not having the shooting that they have this year, but it's still an interesting matchup of analytic basketball and sort of going semi-small, you know, with Peely trying to be sort of their big and seeing how they match up against a team like South Carolina. Anyway, want your thoughts and comments. What do you think of the super small lineup? Are you a believer in it and think we should, uh, UConn should go that way for the rest of the year? Or do you think this is just, uh, uh, Aubrey Griffin is in the doghouse and he's just trying to motivate her and it's just a matter of time before Aubrey Griffin gets back in the lineup. Your comments, your poison, it's always welcome. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a great night.